we applied to the National Institutes of Health to begin an institute at Cornell called the Cornell Institute for Women in Science. Our goal was to focus on empirical research on women's careers and the reasons for women's success or lack thereof. There's a tremendous number of policy and advocacy centers around the country. And it seems, perhaps this is unfair, but it, it seems like most of them have preordained the problem. And therefore, what they're about is the solution. And the problem, it seems, is discrimination against women in the fields of science. We found in combing the literature that the expectation that everyone had, which is that the small numbers of women in math-based fields of science in the academy is due to discrimination in the interviewing and hiring process, this is a very commonly held belief, is in fact wrong. And in fact, a woman who applies for a tenure-track job has a much higher likelihood than the men around her of being interviewed and of being hired. These fields are trying to, you know, employ more women, and so women have a great chance of getting hired if they only apply. And the problem is that they don't apply for the jobs, not that they're discriminated against once they apply. And once we were able to put our finger on that, with the aid, of course, of all the dozens of researchers across the country who are doing the work that we cited and that we relied on, that allowed us to focus on the key current problems that are impeding the careers of women in science. And this is really the focus of a lot of our current work, is understanding the influence of the decision to have children on a woman's life and how it differs from that decision in a man's life, given men's much longer periods of fertility, and how those decisions can be softened by modern universities in the sense of made more, more facilitated so that women can have children and combine the having of children with a career.